Hey everyone, Jeff here, and today we're talking Criterion Collection recommendations. Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to the channel, and today I'm going to give you 10 recommendations that I think you should pick up in the next Criterion Collection 50% off sale. Now if you don't know the Criterion Collection, they are a boutique Blu-ray and now 4K label that started back in the days of Laserdisc and DVD, and they put out some of the better quality releases, both from a video and audio perspective, but also from packaging and special features in the whole nine yards. So I'm actually shooting this on July 1st, which kicked off the 50% off sale at barnesandnoble.com in in stores at Barnes & Noble. Criterion does 50% off at Barnes & Noble two times a year, usually July and November, I believe, and then they have 50% off sales on their Criterion.com web store, which are 24-hour flash sales throughout the year. So usually that's the best time to buy Criterions, and so if you reference this video now, you'll have a good idea of what to buy for the future sales or for the sale that just started this month. Now to kick things off, I'm going to start with a foreign movie and one from director Akira Kurosawa from 1958 we've got the hidden fortress here the reason i picked this is because first of all it's a great kurosawa movie if you like japanese cinema and you like kurosawa you'll really enjoy this but it's also super culturally relevant because this is actually one of the movies that inspired george lucas to create star wars and you will see similarities between the storyline here and the storyline in the original star wars this movie has some great uh, action moments it has a lot of funny moments and it's just typical kurosawa just breathtaking cinema cinematography and a beautiful movie to watch is going to be in Japanese with English subtitles but I think it's well worth watching it in Japanese and reading the subtitles versus watching a dub and based on all the movies and the influence this had on George Lucas and Star Wars I think it's a really important movie that you should check out. Next up we're going black and white but also another foreign movie from 1931 and I've got M by Fritz Lang here on Blu-ray. This is a 1931 serial killer psychological thriller. Now, in 1931, not a lot of people were doing psychological thrillers. This may have been one of the first. I don't know if it is the first, but it's definitely one of the first. And nobody was really covering serial killers and murders, especially of children. Peter Lorre plays the murderer in this movie. He's right here on the cover. Super creepy in this role. Very chilling. It is definitely the, you know, blueprint and the... the influence for all the movies that followed it within the psychological thriller genre like if we don't have m i don't think we have silence of the lambs i don't think we have seven i don't think we have zodiac i don't think we have that type of movie so m is really good it's in german with english subtitles but it has an excellent performance by peter Lorre, one of the creepiest killers in movie history and i think you guys will really like it if you're into psychological thrillers now on a bit of a lighter note i'm going to take you into a, a musical comedy here from 1978 and this is i want to hold your hand. This is actually the first movie that was directed by Robert Zemeckis, written by Bob Gale. They went on to do lots of great work, including Back to the Future. Um, but the reason I picked this is because the Beatles are obviously a super important uh, cultural milestone in human history. I love the Beatles, and they have a movie in the Criterion Collection, A Hard Day's Night, which is awesome. But I think that this is lesser known, and I think you should watch it. It's it's a movie that basically is like uh, if you took Dazed and Confused, but you set it on the date that the Beatles went on the Ed Sullivan show. And it's a group of teenagers who are basically trying to meet the Beatles and trying to get access to that show. It all takes place within that same day. And it's a really interesting look at sort of the teenager and Beatle hysteria in the early to mid-60s in the United States, which I think is super cool. It has a lot of funny moments. The Beatles don't appear in it, but they sort to have like lookalikes that are all over the place and they never really show their faces but there's some really funny moments uh playing with that and it's robert zemeckis's first film with bob gale so that's a no-brainer presented by steven spielberg this is a great movie it's a short quick musical comedy and i think you guys will really like it if you enjoy the beatles and that sort of genre so next up, we're going from pretty light, funny, lighthearted to really dark and creepy. Um, we're going with The Brood. This is from, let's see, 1978, 1979. David Cronenberg movie, so you know there's going to be body horror, but there's also a ton of psychological horror in this movie. It is definitely a sort of inspiration or influence for things like 
hereditary. Um, it is definitely influenced by, say, Rosemary's Baby. It is that type of horror, but a little bit more focused on the body horror. It's a great movie. This movie really sort of established Cronenberg's style. It laid the groundwork for all of his future movies, and it is still, I think, one of his best. He sort of had a resurgence lately with his movie Crimes of the Future, which was just recently released in 2022. So I think if you liked that, or if you like other Cronenberg movies, The Brood isn't one that gets talked about so much as, as some of his other movies, but I think it's one that deserves to be appreciated. And if you're into body horror, psychological horror, you'll really enjoy this one. Now we're taking a trip back to 1955, some more black and white, and I have to recommend The Night of the Hunter. I recently watched this for the first time, and I think Robert Mitchum in this movie gives one of the best acting performances of anyone ever. The movie's basically about Robert Mitchum's character, who's a traveling preacher. He hooks up with a widow, and she has a couple of kids, and there's sort of some, you know, questionable actions taken by Robert Mitchum, the preacher, and you're sort of like, what are his intentions? What's he going to do with the kids? Is he good? Is he bad? He is a preacher, but he's got sort of a dark side. It's got some really cool cinematography, some great scenes, great acting. The two kids in this movie are incredible as well, and it has a really, you know, interesting ending. Um, I liked the movie as a whole, but Robert Mitchum is the highlight. So if you want great acting, Robert Mitchum is as creepy and chilling as probably anybody has ever been on screen in this movie, and it's just expertly put together and certainly inspired lots of movies to come after it. So those were kind of heavy ones. Let's get them a little more lighthearted again. I've actually got a, a straight up comedy drama for you. Um, it's from 1991 and it is The Fisher King. This is a Terry Gilliam directed movie. Again, not one that people think when they think Terry Gilliam, but it stars Robin Williams and Jeff Bridges. So great cast. In this movie, Jeff Bridges is a radio shock jock who's had sort of a recent scandal, and Robin Williams is actually a homeless man in New York City who is convinced that the Holy Grail is in the Upper East Side of New York. And the two of them sort of go on this crazy adventure uh, trying to find the Holy Grail in this city. So I love Robin Williams, and I love him in this role. His stuff like this in One Hour Photo and some of the other roles where he gets a little more serious, Good Will Hunting is maybe the most well-known, he kills it both as a dramatic and comedic actor. Jeff Bridges is also awesome, and it's got excellent direction by Terry Gilliam. So the movie is sort of this modern-day fairy tale set in New York City. It's a really cool movie, and if you like either of these actors or Terry Gilliam's work, you're going to love this movie, and I think it deserves more attention. Next up, I've got a documentary for you, and this one is actually sports-related, but I think it's one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. I remember watching this in a college class on sports and politics, where we sort of covered, you know, the interest section between those two and I couldn't stop thinking about it. So it's When We Were Kings, Muhammad Ali's documentary about his fight with George Foreman in Zaire. This came out in 1996 and this was such a big deal because Muhammad Ali and George Foreman were going over to Africa and the sort of quote around this fight was, it's a fight between two blacks and a black nation organized by blacks. So it was a really moving documentary. It was a really important piece of sports history and black culture. It is a really interesting look behind the scenes at Muhammad Ali a little bit later in his life, 1974, uh, after all of his struggles with Vietnam and the Vietnam War and not going into the draft and protesting the war, all of those struggles, and he came out of it after this. And it's a really interesting look, not only at Muhammad Ali and George Foreman and that sort of boxing culture, Culture, but also the African culture here in Zaire and everything that was going on around this fight. It was a huge deal. It was a huge festival and there are a ton of great moments in this documentary. I love it so much. Uh, Muhammad Ali is just so captivating anytime he's on screen and I highly recommend this to anybody. This is probably better than anything ESPN 30 for 30 or ESPN Documentary Films has done. Uh, this is just an excellent sports documentary that I think everyone should see. So next up, I'm going to dive back into some more horror, but some classic horror and what I would call elevated horror. In fact, in 1944, when this movie came out, this is probably the closest thing to like an A24 elevated horror movie that had ever been released. And it is The Uninvited. The Uninvited was one of the first like serious haunted house movies. There had been sort of, you know, comedic haunted house takes and stuff that wasn't so serious, but The Uninvited took the ghost haunting genre 
super seriously and it remains one of the best haunted house ghost movies ever made. It's black and white, it's gonna be in the old aspect ratio, the academy aspect ratio, black bars left and right, but you know what? That almost makes it more captivating. It's also sort of like this weird romantic horror drama. Like there's a lot of different elements mixed in here. It's not just straight horror, which is why I would recommend this to anybody, even somebody who's not necessarily a horror movie fan. It's from 1944. It's not gonna have like the crazy jump scares, but it's a great atmospheric horror movie, very gothic, and I love it for that. One of the best horror movies ever made. So now we're on number nine already, I can't believe it, but I had to pick sort of, I wanted to pick one sort of like disturbing movie, and the Criterion Collection has some of these that are notorious. There's like Antichrist, and there's Salo, uh, there's Funny Games, but the one that disturbed me more than any of those really was this war movie, and I think it is simply one of the greatest and most realistic gritty war movies ever made, and that is Come and See from 1985. This is a brutal look at what World War II was really like. They don't sugarcoat anything in this movie. It has some super hard to watch scenes. It's disturbing, but it's realistic. Now there aren't a ton of movies made from sort of like the Soviet side. Most of the World War II movies you see, it's always the you know Western Europeans in the United States and Canada, you know, fighting the Nazis. But this is a look at that other side of the war, the the Eastern Front, where the Soviet resistance in these countries like Belarus, where this takes place, um, really went through hell with the Nazis. This is far beyond any of the other World War II movies that you're probably used to. It tells a different side of the story, but I think it's so important. And if you have the stomach and the heart to sit through it, I think you will not necessarily enjoy it, but appreciate the way this movie was made. And it's, it's really, I think everyone should watch it, especially with what's going on right now with Russia and Ukraine. Um, if more people had watched this, I think there'd be less war. And now finally, number 10, I'm going with another foreign movie, another Japanese movie. We're going the complete Lady Snowblood. This actually has two movies. It has Lady Snowblood and Lady Snowblood, Love Song of Vengeance, directed by Toshia Fujita. These movies are great in their own right. They're sort of cult classics in Japan. They have some great choreography, great action scenes, great sword fights. Uh, the reason I picked this is because you probably will notice a lot of similarities between this movie and the Kill Bill saga. Kill Bill and Kill Bill Volume 2 essentially were inspired by this movie. This is one of Tarantino's favorite movies, and the fact that this is a two-movie set, right? You got Lady Snowblood and then the sequel, pretty much where he got the idea for Kill Bill Volume 1 and Volume 2, and it inspired a lot of that movie. So if you liked Kill Bill and you like that aesthetic, and you like the sort of over-the-top action and the sword fighting, you'll really like Lady Snowblood. It is excellent in its own right, but I like picking these movies that inspired other huge mainstream movies because it gives you a sort of new appreciation for where directors like Tarantino get their ideas. They get their ideas from watching movies. They simply just watch movies, and so if anyone out there wants to be a director or a writer, um, just watch stuff, watch movies, keep watching movies, keep finding what inspires you and, you know, find these foreign movies and things that maybe aren't so mainstream uh, because without Lady Snowblood, we probably don't have Tarantino. We probably don't have Kill Bill. So it's a very important movie and one I think that uh, you guys will enjoy if you're into that genre. So that's my list. Those are the 10 movies I'd recommend. Of course, I have hundreds of movies back on the shelf from Criterion Collection. There are lots of other great choices, but I wanted to pick 10 that were a little bit um, less in the public eye when it came to the Criterion Collection and really mix up the recommendations. I could have easily done a top 10 horror, a top 10 documentary. I mean, the Criterion Collection is loaded with great content, great movies, and great discs. But I think this 10 is a nice, unique smattering of comedy, drama, psychological horror, thrillers, documentary. It gives you a lot of different pieces here uh, that hopefully will give you some recommendations where you can go spend your money during their 50% off sales. The best way to stay up to date when those 50% off sales hit is always to be on the Criterion Collection email list. Go to their site, sign up. They'll tell you when it hits Barnes & Noble. They'll tell you when there's a flash sale. And honestly, I don't think I've ever bought a Criterion Collection movie full price. I buy them at half off or I buy them used or at thrift stores. So that's my recommendation. They're still going to be 20 bucks because they're half off MSRP of 40 and the 4K titles will still be like 25, 30 bucks, but it's the best way to buy them and you can really bulk up. Plus, if you buy from Barnes & Noble, sometimes you can put in some like memory 
member discounts and member benefits. And if you buy from, from Criterion.com, they add up points and every certain amount of points, you get a $50 gift card. So there's good ways to sort of get these movies uh, within a budget. If you enjoyed this video, you want more recommendations or more collecting tips in Blu-ray and 4K reviews, make sure you subscribe. Also make sure to follow me on social media for all the latest from me and the channel and check out all the links in the description to our partners who support me and our content here. So appreciate y'all watching this list. Hopefully you got some good recommendations and you know what to buy now during these 50% off sales. Let me know if you grab anything or if you have any others you want to recommend to people, throw them in the comments by all means, build the community up and let's share with each other. So thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe and healthy out there and I'll talk to you guys soon.